And for more on this, I want to bring in Moeed Youssef. He is the Associate Vice President of the Asia Center at the U.S. Institute of Peace. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we saw what was happening at the U.N. Uh, with the War of Words. We're also seeing military exercises. So what do you think will come out of this? These two countries have been there before, but could this lead to something bigger? One hopes not. Look, I mean, when you get to this situation, the risks are so high that you can never rule out an inadvertent escalation to a crisis. I mean, there have been two crises at least three times in the past 15 years or so, uh, the last one being when the Mumbai attacks in 2008 took place and, you know, they got to an air war situation. Um, I think it's really posturing. Uh, the, the moment for the military uh, strike, if there was one, is gone. It's literally the first day or two. Uh, both sides have military forces which can actually defend in a way that neither gains by going uh, for a use of force option. Uh, at the end of the day, that's probably the best we can hope for. Uh, but I don't see them backing off uh, because if either one goes first or blinks first, I think the other gains a, a symbolic victory. And that's what South Asia has been about for so long. These two countries also have nuclear weapons. It's something that's been talked about. Could this ever escalate? Could these two countries go into war? I don't want to think about it, because what comes after that is quite horrific. Um, you know, one of the things that the, we've found so far is that short of war, they know how to control the situation. Once you get into a war situation, uh, neither side has ever managed or had an opportunity to see how to control it. Once you're in war, the fog of war hits, anything can go wrong. And you know, part of the problem is the entire world descends on India and Pakistan and says, don't do this, don't go to war. But only in the crisis moment. Once the crisis is over, everybody goes about their business, forgets about it till the next crisis. And the key is to find a way not to allow these countries to get to this point. Because once they're there, you know, as I said, the risks are simply too high with nuclear weapons in the mix. Narendra Modi, uh, Nawaz Sharif, they have a personal relationship. There was a lot of optimism at one point. Uh, Modi even went to Sharif's house just eight or nine months ago. Is What's the status of their relationship? And, and could they, could the two of them bring down the tensions? To be very honest, I don't think they have one. Um, the relationship is better than what most expected in the beginning because Modi has a hardline view on Pakistan, etc. But since that visit that you mentioned, I mean, he, he coming to Lahore, uh, things have gone down and things have gone south very, very quickly. Um, and, you know, this particular incident and the war of words, it's Modi and Nawaz Sharif. So you can see very clearly that this is coming from the very top. Uh, and once the situation gets so dicey, I think the kind of relationship that these two have cannot overshadow uh, the kind of situation that they're in. India and Pakistan, remember, 70 years, wars, nuclear weapons. A relationship can take you only that far. It may not get you, you know, it may not get the countries to war. But short of that, I think they've really got to work on their issues. Uh, and that's where the biggest weakness is. They keep talking about it. Terrorism, no resolution at all. You have a crisis. You go back to saying, yeah, we'll talk about it. Nothing happens. Kashmir, uh, both sides, yeah, yeah, we want to resolve it. You don't get there. So I think unless you get to the specific issues of Kashmir and terrorism, I think you're going to keep falling into this trap of crises, worrying about a nuclear war, pulling back, and then unfortunately falling back into it. All right. Well, we'll have to leave it there, Mouid Yusuf. Thank you so much for your Pleasure. perspective. We appreciate your time. Hello, welcome to this hour's news desk on CCTV News. I'm Wang Yiji in Beijing. Let's start on the border with Pakistan and India. The Pakistani side has accused India's army of killing two of its soldiers with unprovoked shooting along the line of control. The shooting started at 2.30 a.m. and continued for five and a half hours. The Pakistani military says the Indian army opened fire in four sectors. Tensions have risen along the line of control after an attack on a base camp in India-controlled Kashmir on September the 18th, which left 17 Indian soldiers dead. India blamed Pakistan for the attack. Pakistan has rejected the accusations. Thursday began in India with news of an emergency cabinet meeting called by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. A few hours later came the announcement by India's defence spokesperson that the army struck militant base camps in Pakistan to stop them from infiltrating into the country to conduct terror attacks. Based on very specific and credible information which we received yesterday, that some terrorist teams had positioned themselves at launch pads along the line of control, 
with an aim to carry out infiltration and terrorist strikes in Jammu and Kashmir and various other metros in our country. The Indian Army conducted surgical strikes last night at these launch pads. Across the border, Pakistan denied any such strikes took place, calling India's account a fabrication. It reported two of its soldiers were killed and nine others injured in what was described as an exchange of small arms fire. And Pakistan's defense minister put India on warning about such provocations in the future. If they ever violate the line of control again, if there is another violation of the ceasefire, God willing, Pakistani forces will give them a tough response. Tensions between the two nations have risen even higher than usual following an attack on an Indian army camp in Kashmir earlier this month. 18 Indian soldiers were killed in the assault, which India blames on Pakistan. Pakistan, however, denies any involvement. The strikes follow an Indian campaign to isolate Pakistan diplomatically, coming one day after the government announced it would pull out of a regional summit set for November, a decision that prompted other nations to follow suit. But, according to the Indian military, the threat of infiltration was endangering its citizens, forcing it to use military action now. India is asking villages living in critical zones along its border with Pakistan to evacuate and move to safer areas as a precautionary measure. Shweta Bajaj, CCTV, New Delhi, India. Tensions between India and Pakistan are high after New Delhi carried out what it calls surgical strikes. It happened inside Pakistan-administered Kashmir. The attacks follow weeks of deadly violence, the killing of a Pakistan-based separatist, and the shelling of an army base in India-controlled Kashmir. Neighboring China is calling for calm. CCTV's Nathan King is in our Washington newsroom with the very latest. Nathan. Yeah, thanks, Elaine. Villagers have been told to leave, and the streets of Srinagar, the capital of India-controlled area of Jammu and Kashmir, is deserted as the two countries face off in the worst crisis in Kashmir in over a decade. As you can see, smoke can be clearly seen on the Pakistani side of the line of control after India carried out what it called surgical strikes, which New Delhi says were designed to stop terrorist attacks on Indian-controlled cities. Pakistan should realize its responsibility towards ensuring peace in this region. And hope at least now Pakistan will realize its folly and stop aiding, abetting terrorism against India. Pakistan says Indian forces killed two Pakistani soldiers and wounded nine others. Pakistan's Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif condemned the attacks as, quote, unprovoked and naked aggression. Pakistan also says its troops proportionately return fire and urged India not to cross the line of control, a border which has divided the two nations' armed forces for decades. If they ever violate the line of control again, if there's another violation of the ceasefire or the ceasefire line, God willing, Pakistani forces will give them a tough response. India and Pakistan have fought two wars over Kashmir since becoming independent in 1965 and 1999. Both nations, of course, have nuclear weapons, which makes any confrontation, Elaine, even more dangerous. And Nathan, where does China stand on this dispute as it shares a border with Kashmir? Yeah, I mean, China has two areas which actually border on Indian control Kashmir and Pakistani control Kashmir, and they've been warning both sides to solve their difference even before this latest Indian uh, attack incident. On Wednesday, China's foreign ministry issued a statement on its website saying, and let's read this, uh, that China hopes, quote, that Pakistan and India will strengthen channels for dialogue, appropriately handle any differences, improve bilateral relations, and together protect the region's peace and stability. China has obviously a deep interest in the region. Pakistan, as we know, is a close partner and key destination for Beijing's One, World, One Belt, One Road investments. India and China have their own border dispute over the region. They have actually fought in the past and trying to delimit the area now in a peaceful way. A lot riding a lane on the peaceful outcome in what has been called a war at the top of the world and a very beautiful area as well. Back to you. All right, Nathan King in our Washington newsroom.
And we begin tonight with Pakistan and the country has condemned India for its unprovoked firing along Kashmir's line of control, which saw two Pakistani soldiers killed early on Thursday. Well, Pakistani troops returned fire against what it called Indian military aggression. India's military says it carried out a surgical strike against terrorists along the de facto border with Pakistan and Kashmir. India's director general of the military operations, Rabin Singh, said the strikes were aimed at neutralizing terrorist forces preparing to invade Indian territory. China and India held the dialogue on fighting terrorism on the 27th of this month. We held conversations on specific measures to enhance cooperation in the area of anti-terrorism and safety, and how to face the threat of terrorism. We reached an important consensus. China has been addressing tensions between India and Pakistan through various channels. We are keeping communication open and hope India and Pakistan will enhance dialogue, solve their differences properly and safeguard the stability and security of the region.